in your house and in your presence today. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. You're a wonderful God. Praise the Lord.
free and whole. Walk in what? Hand in hand. With Jesus. And so if we just sing a little bit of that real quick this morning before we go on into the teaching hour. Hand in hand. We walk each day. something in the Holy Ghost will just leave, leave right up in your belly and remind you he's in there. Can you say praise the Lord? So I've been asking the Lord just let the Holy Ghost leap up in people's belly. I tell you these folks that are trying to be rebellious and walk away, it ain't going to happen because the Holy Ghost is in them. And Paul said the Lord apprehended, he arrested me. Hallelujah. And how many of you believe that this is a time when God's going to begin to arrest people? Yeah, yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's going to begin to wake up something on the inside of them. Yeah. Praise the Lord. I've heard telling you have two right here in this church about all of a sudden one day. That's the way they tell it. One day they just got up and it was all over. Right, yeah. They went right back to doing what it was supposed to do. And it did. And isn't that the best way to have it? Is yeah. just get up and all of a sudden the Lord Bible said about the prodigal what? And he came to himself. How many know himself wasn't a hog pen? And himself wasn't righteous living. And himself wasn't running from the Father. But himself, the real self, himself, was that mind that said, I will arise. Come on now. I will arise and go back. He said, I'm going home. How many know where home is? Well, home is His presence. Home is the presence of the Father. Amen. So I'm looking for some people to come to Himself and Herself and say, bless God, this is, this is not for me. I know where I belong. Praise the Lord. Now, what's our duty? To just go on like nothing ever happened? That's the truth. 
shout on and praise on yeah. and magnify God. Our duty is not to meet Him with a clipboard of questions. Our duty is not to no. Our duty is to do like the Father does when He saw Him a great way off. The Bible said He ran. 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 The Father didn't leave. The Son's the one that left. And he laughed, but the Father done the running. Why? Because he wanted that boy to know that when he got home, they wasn't going to treat him like a servant. And when he got home, they weren't going to treat him like a slave. And he said, all I want to be is a hired servant. And Father shouted all over all of that and said, bring me a robe. Bring me a ring. Bring me new shoes. Well, praise the Lord. I believe God's fixing to show us a restoration, folks. I believe with all my heart that God's fixing to restore not just the things and the ifs and the what, but the years. The years. And so you'd better get ready and set yourself up for a lot of stuff to return and come home. They've been gone for a long time. That's a word for somebody this morning. Set yourself up for some things that have been gone for a long time to come back home. Why? Because home is Father's house. What is Father's house? It's wealth and riches and glory and power and, 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 and it's acceptance in the beloved. Glory to God. And bless God that that, that brother said, boy, oh, the father found him out there with his lip hanging, didn't he? In the barn. All up shouting in there in that rich house, and he was out there sitting in a haystack in the barn. What's your problem? Nobody never did celebrate me. Nobody never did. And the father said, Yeah, but all I had, all I had was thine. You could have walked in this power, you could have moved in this power. Don't think it's strange when somebody that ain't been saved two months starts healing the sick. Start going, why? Because all of it's ours right now. We better go on and get it and take it and walk in it because God's getting ready to send a whole bunch of folks that ain't going to doubt Him and they're not going to waver and they're not going to have to go through religion. They're coming in strictly by the blood. Come on now. And they're not going to have to be unlearned of anything and they're going to run with the torch. Amen. They're going to catch the fire and run with it and so what are we going to do? Well, that's why God's preaching to us like here. We are going to raise up and prophesy to every dry bone, hear the word of the Lord, come back to life, get back together with the body, let there be a restoration, let there be a healing, and let the healing begin in us and then spread to all of that that is without us. Amen. Praise the Lord. God bless you this morning. Quick 
work and will cut it short in righteousness, saith the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Because Jesus said, I didn't come to judge the world. 
It's not why I'm here. I came that you may have life and life more abundantly. Now, this is the judgment. When you reject that life, you bring judgment on yourself. You choose to walk in darkness. And many born-again believers walk in judgment that God never put on them. Because they believe that because they messed up, they now have to live under the consequences of what they did. But in God, there's no such things as consequences. As soon as you turn unto the Lord, it's all, it's like a clean slate. It's like it never happened. When we were little kids back in children's church and Sunday school, they would tell us justified means just as if I never sinned. Right, right. Just like it never happened. Yes. And we have to get convinced of that because otherwise we will carry around poverty, we'll carry around sickness and disease, yeah. we'll carry around strife in our family. Why? Because, well, I should have gave and I didn't give. Right. Or I should have done this and I knew it was the right thing, but I didn't do it. Well, I shouldn't have eaten that and I did, so now i got to suffer for the rest of the night with it instead of just repenting for what I did. Right. Well, I messed up and I got angry and I lost my temper and now i got to suffer through this strife in my family because I made a mistake. No, you don't. That's right. Hallelujah. The Lord can put you right back on yes. the right track and He can erase. The Bible says He can even erase the memory yes. of all right. the bad that's happened. Hallelujah. If He gives you back everything that the canker worm and the locusts have stolen from you, you're not. I hope you're not going to sit around and hold on to the old memories. Right. Just let them go. Yes. There's a big thing. Dwayne and I were talking about this not too long ago that people want to know where they came from. Yeah. What's their background? Where did they come from? Well, you might not want to know those things. I mean, let's just be honest. The Lord used a harlot to, to be in the very line of Jesus' birth. To bring about things. And I'm sure that nobody wanted to turn around and say, well, what did you do before you got here? No. you got to leave the past behind you. Paul said even the things that you thought were good in the past, you got to leave behind you because they will make you not press towards the mark of a high calling. They'll make you want to sit there and not move on. And you have to move forward. What was good in the past was good. Right. It was for their time. I love the healing revival. I love the latter rain. Yes. I go back and I listen to things that they taught yes. to remind me and to build my faith up. But I can't stay there. Because if I stay there, I won't move into the new and current things that God has for us. Yeah. I won't move forward. You know, in that time, during the healing revival, for example, they, they were getting great miraculous miracles, but they didn't know a lot about finances yet, with maybe the exception of Royal Roberts. Right. And people still lived in a lot of poverty. Right. Even though they were getting healed of diseases, right. thank God, there was another level to go to. Yeah. There was still another level. And there's always another level of God. You can't exhaust Him. That's right. This book can't hold all that God is. Hallelujah. No matter how much you think you know, the children of Israel thought they had it all. Right. They thought they knew it all about Him. They thought they knew every scripture. And Jesus showed up and they didn't even recognize that the Messiah was in their midst. Right. Because they thought they knew it all. That's right. And that will hinder you if yeah. you stay in that place. But it says, for the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus hath made me free from the law of sin and death. And then in verse 3, for what the law could not do, and that it was weak through the flesh. Why was it weak? Because nobody could keep it. We couldn't keep it today if we all tried. Your flesh cannot obey the thousands and thousands of rules. It started off hundreds, but then somebody would have a question, well, what about this? And a rabbi would come up with another way. Oh, yeah. And another nitpick at it, and another this, and another that. And your flesh just can't keep it. That's why it was weak, because your flesh couldn't do it. God sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh, and for sin condemned sin in the flesh, that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. Now I wanted to stop there and, and talk, because later on we're going to get into how there's nothing that can separate us from the love of Christ. Right. And, and Paul's going to talk about not persecutions, not peril, not all these things. And one of the things that the Lord was speaking to me about yesterday was love and how powerful love is. You know, we kind of think of it as just, yes, God sees me and he loves me in this little sweet sermon, this sermonette that, you know, some very dry person got up and told us a long time ago. But the reality is the love of God is so great and so much more than just a little pat on the back. I know how you feel, honey. Sure is hard what you're going through. Because 
we, we, we dwindle it down to that, and then when you do that, you stay in your same place. Yes. But the Word says that for God so loved the world that He sent His only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in Him should not die but should have eternal life. Well, if you're walking, we put that into the future, and therefore we don't walk into eternal life right now. Well, if you do that, then you find yourself subject. You see what it said? It said that it freed you from the law of sin and death. But if you don't get a revelation of that, and this is for me too, because I said, well, Lord, I needed more of a revelation of this. Then what does most of the church world deal with? I'm not saying all, because the church as a whole is a big thing. And there are those out there that are being persecuted for righteousness' sake. But most of us, what we're going through, what we consider our persecution and our peril, are things that were considered a curse right. under the law. Right. It was things, if you go back and you read Deuteronomy chapter 28, the first part is these great lessons. Right. But you should go and you should read all the curses. Why? Because I think they're on you? Absolutely not. Because I believe you're free from them. But so much of what we go through is what's yes. listed in that curse. That's right. And that's exactly what Jesus came to deliver yes. us from. And we shouldn't be going through it no more. But if you read that list, it is sickness. It is disease. Yes. It is even as specific as inflammation in your body. That's what saying. Yes. I mean, it, it gets specific about some things. Sores on your body. Right. Your knees and your legs being sore and not right, able to move. Right. I mean, it gets very specific right, about things right. that we should not be dealing with. Yes. It's very specific about poverty, yes. about everything you do falling apart every single time that you try to do it. Yes. Those are things that we're not supposed... That's not the suffering for Christ that, that Paul was talking about. No. And so often we think that that's our suffering for Christ. That I know I'm sick, but it can't separate me from the love of God. No, his love freed you from that Free. sickness. Yes. Yes. It was so powerful. See, we, we dwindle salvation down to some futuristic, oh, yes. when I die, I'll go to heaven. And right. yes, it is that, but that's that's a small, religion gave us a little small portion yes. of it. And the only reason they were willing to give us that portion was because it was after we died. Yes. So, you know, you can have that after you die. If you do it all right. And you get it all right. They didn't even say that Christ, Christ was the one that was going to do it all for us. No. We still had to do some things right and right. get it all right. Then you would get it. But the Greek word for salvation is a wholeness. Yes, it's indeed. a total salvation yes. of your not only your spirit, but your soul, your, soul your body, yes. your mind, yes. everything yes. that is connected with you. Yes. And if you look at the blessing of God and what that's supposed to be, it includes your finances, yes. it includes your family, because under the curse, if you were operating under the curse, your children went away from you. Right. And how many people in church have watched their children run away from church? Right. And run away from the family of God. And go out with a bunch of strangers where they don't belong. Well, that's under the curse. Under the curse, yeah. And the Spirit, it says the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus yes, has freed you from free. that. Yes. And all of us need to get a now revelation of that. Yes. Not just a someday future revelation right. of that. Because then you'll, if you hate it the way that Christ hates it. Well. If you'll see it the way that He sees it. Yes. You won't pet that teddy bear any longer. That's right. You won't allow it to stay. No. You'll get it out. Yes. You'll get so serious about it. You know, it, it was it was works. It, it didn't it didn't do anything for us. But a long time ago, people were so convinced that demons were in so many things. Right. That I mean, you couldn't you know hardly play Monopoly in the house. Oh yeah. And they were dead serious it was going to get out. Yeah. they throw it away. They didn't care how much money you spent on it. They didn't care if it made you mad. Right. And you sure enough weren't going to bring anything in there that looked demonic to them, like dragons or any skulls or anything that they thought, because they were dead serious about it. Well, that was just under the old order. Right. But there's some things that the Lord would like us to get dead serious about. Yeah. That that's not staying in my house. Amen. Sickness isn't staying in my house because it's not a part of who God is, Amen. so it's not a part of who I am. Poverty is not staying in my Amen. house. It, it, it's not staying here. Amen. I just won't let it. I, I, I hate it the way that Christ hated yes. I hate it so much that if he died on a tree so I can be free of it, I'm sure not going to sit here and entertain it. That's right. 
Praise the Lord. Because we, and that's why I said this is this is for me too. Because many of the things that I've gone to God and prayed about and struggled with were things I had no business right. having any struggle with. Because the price was already paid 2,000 years ago. What I should have been doing was standing up in the authority and the power and the name of Jesus that I have and saying, oh, no, you don't. I don't live under the curse of the law of sin and death. I'm not under that curse. I don't have to deal with that. I don't have to. I, 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 Nana used to kick, kick it out. She used to just throw open the door and kick her foot, and that meant it was over. And when it was over, it was over. And that was it. And that's what we have to make a decision that it's over. Yeah. Well, what if it tries to come back? Kick it out again. Yeah. Kick it out. You, well, what, hap what, what, what happens, you know, if, if, if you are determined, if your child wants to do something? Um, I remember when Lissa was three, she got into this little thing of running away down the road from her brothers. So they tried to take her out to the car, and she'd take off running. Well, we were. I was determined that was not going to happen because it's not safe. Because she's not going to be out in the road and she's not going to run off to some stranger. And and so we did everything as parents that we needed to do, and put including putting the fear of God in us in her that she wouldn't do it. Then she had another time that she wanted. She uh, opened the car door. She's probably about four. Opened the car door and tried to get out of the car before I got out in a parking lot. So those child safety locks went right on. Right. You're not getting out of this car into right. a parking lot. That's not safe. That's dangerous. But when are we going to get that serious right. about right. these things right. going on in our life yeah. that the minute they happen, yeah. not you know, and we're all guilty of it, but I mean the minute they happen, That's the right. minute that it looks like you're not going to have enough for right. the week or the month or the day or what you're going through, that you start putting your foot down yeah. right then. Yeah. The minute yeah. you start to feel yeah. sick or your child starts to look yeah. sick, because what we have a tendency to do, and the Lord has been dealing with me about this in, in my own life, if, if babies start running fever, we run to the medicine cabinet. Well, there's nothing wrong with giving them medicine, and I still do. But why am I not laying hands on first? Because I'm more powerful than any medicine. The Spirit of God on the inside of me is more powerful than that. So why am I not doing that first? And then, yes, you can use what the Lord has given us through medicine. But there is a put God first principle in the Bible. That if you'll seek first the kingdom, everything you need will be added to you. And then in verse 5, I know I'm going here, but in verse 5, For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the Spirit, the things of the Spirit. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Yeah. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. So then they that are in the flesh cannot please God. I've told you before, it's not personal. When the Lord tells us to straighten up, yeah. to get in the Holy Ghost, yeah. to stop throwing our baby fits, like right. He has to tell all of us sometimes, right. it's not personal. When we get up here and we tell you, stop throwing your fit, yeah. get in the Spirit, yeah, get in the Holy Ghost, it's not because we're telling you that we haven't been there. Right. We've been there enough to know it only produces death. That's right. Ken Copeland said, you can sit down and cry, and Jesus can cry with you, but it will not produce the answer we're looking for. Right. He is touched with the feelings of your infirmity. He hates that you're sitting down and crying over this. It breaks his heart, but he, it won't get him to an answer. No. It won't bring in your money. It won't bring in your healing. It won't bring in your family. Well, Having that emotional fit does not do anything no, to help you, no, me, no, no, no. or anybody else. That's right. All it does is drag out the process. Yeah. Right. Have you ever needed, I, I've needed answers about things and had to fast or had to pray and pray and pray because emotionally I was dragging out the process. I had not let go and let God. And even though God had told me the answer, even though I knew it was going to be okay in my spirit, my emotions were going haywire. So even though I knew what the Word of God said, it took a long time for me to have peace yeah. over it because my emotions were gone. Right. Well, what do you do then? Well, that is when you have to pray and you have to fast 
and you have to have the word going 24 hours a day or worship music going 24 hours a day because in of your own self, you're wavering. That's the time when you got to be here the most. Well, I don't want to come because I'm mad. You better get here. When your flesh is acting up, that is when you need to be here the absolute most because you need an uplifting. You need other men and women of God to get up here and tell you that it's going to be okay. That if you need that witness with your spirit that says everything is going to work out just like the Word of God says it is. Why? Because if we remain in a carnal state, we will die. We'll die good, Holy Ghost filled, tongue talking believers will sit here and die. Right. Because why? Because they're simply carnally minded. Hallelujah. They speak in tongues when they're here, but they don't do it at home. All right. They come here and hear a good sermon, but they expect no change. Right. It's like that man was preaching on Wednesday night when he came and he said, Do you believe the Word of God enough? Do you believe the man of God enough that when he gets up and says something and prophesies over you or the church that you actually believe it? Well, believe it so much that you make room for it to happen, right, in, your happen in your life. Ruth Ward Heflin taught us that principle. You have to make room for the glory. Yes, right. You cannot run around like a chicken with your head cut off all week and then come in here and just say, Whew, bless me God. No. <laughs> Pour it out, Jesus. Pour it out. It don't work. You might get a little tiny blessing and you might run around a little bit and then you'll get home and you'll go right back to your same old, same old. Lord, Jesus, so Why? Because faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. I love to shout and I love to dance, but I tell you, faith don't come by dancing and shouting. It comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God and that happens in many ways. It happens through reading your Bible it happens through going to church. Yes, it happens through listening to sermons at home. It even happens through prayer. Why? Because mom, mom played that song earlier today where he, Paul, it, it quotes Paul, pray with the Spirit and with understanding. And later on it's going to say in here that you know we don't know how to pray, but the Spirit within yes, us glory. will pray for us when we know not how to pray. Amen. And the truth is over everything... And, and I practice this. Over everything, you should pray in the Spirit first. Yeah. Because the Lord will give you a word oh, for how to pray right. over the situation. Because sometimes you think you know what to pray. Right. And you don't. Right. Amen. You know, those testimony services that we tease about, the devil's been on me all week, bless his holy name. And there's some prayers like that. Yeah. Lord, heal him of his cancer. Well, is it his cancer? Are you giving it to him? All right. And that seems like a little thing, but the Lord wants to bring us to, he wants us to understand that our words have power. Amen. And that if we pray in the spirit over it first, You'd find yourself saying things like, I thank you that cancer has no power in his body. I thank you that he's already healed. He may not know it, the doctors may not know it, his body may not know it, but he's healed and whole. I thank you that, that cancer is a demonic force that has no right in his body. And I cast it out. Why? Because if you don't go with any kind of power, and if you go in with the belief that God hasn't already done it. Because see, some things God already took care of. Oh, yes, He did. Hallelujah. He took care of it on the cross. Yeah. So if you go in there trying to get Him to do something He already did, then that's like trying to get me to make you suffer when supper's sitting on the table. I can tell you right now, I ain't going back in and making another supper. supper. I like to cook okay, but I don't like it that much. You better go eat what's on the table. <laughs> I'm not making. I'll tell my kids that. Uh -huh. I, I, I don't make choices. I make dinner. Right. Here it is. Yep. That's what we're having. Right. I'm, I'm, I'm not making four different dinners to satisfy everybody. And that's the same thing with God. If he's already given it to you, right. and we're sitting there going, give it please, give it please, give it please, give it please. And he's just sitting there going, just receive. Just receive. If you just receive, you already have it. If you just open your eyes and see where you are, 
that you're no longer in the kingdom of darkness, but you've been translated into the kingdom of his dear son. And those things don't even exist here. They just don't even exist to him. God, God can't talk about lack because he don't have any. He can't produce lack because it's not in him to produce. For so long, people were told that God made him sick. That God did this to them. God put it on them for a reason. The truth is God can't make you sick because he doesn't have sickness in him. Sickness is a twisted, turned around form of instead of your health flowing, it is now being dried up and taken away. He can't do that. He just can't do it. It's not in him. He can't curse your enemy because he's full of blessings. Remember what when... when when um, Balak wanted ba Balaam to get up there and curse him. <laughs> and Balaam wasn't even supposed to go, but he kept messing with the Lord yes. and saying, should I go? You, you, you better just take the first word and run with it. Right. <laughs> you are better off. If the Lord already answered your prayer, don't go back looking for a second answer. That's right. Because if you won't leave him alone, he may give you just what you well, want. Right. And you may not like it when you get it. So Balaam went with him, and he almost got killed on the way. That's right. But they finally get there, and Balak says, curse him. And every time Balaam opens his mouth, All right. blessings come Blessing. out. Yeah. And Balak keeps thinking if he could just see them from another angle. Yeah. Right. So he just takes them to a different mountain. Says, so maybe if you'll just see him from another angle. And sometimes we're like that with people and God, Lord, if you could just see what they did to me. Oh, yeah. If you could just see how they're acting. Right. If you could just see this, then you'd be on my side. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but he don't see them the way you see them. Right. Even if it, it, he don't see murderers as murderers, I know we don't like that. That's right. But that's not what he sees. No. He sees his son, yeah. his daughter yeah. that he made. He sees everything he put in them yeah. to be. It's just like how a mama can love her child right through prison, oh, right through right. everything they do. In, in her eyes, she sees that innocent baby that she put oh, into this right. world, she not did. what happened to it. And God's the same way. He yeah. sees us in our original yeah. state yeah. and form yeah. that he put us into this world, and he doesn't go back on what he says. Oh, bless oh. The Lord. Hallelujah. He's not going to turn around and call it bad, and he's already called it good. Amen. He won't do it, and he wouldn't do it for Balaam. No. Every time he fought the David just told him, he said, look, what God has blessed, I can't I curse. Can't curse. Amen. I just can't do it. You want me to do something I can't do. And if, if, if you read that in the context of what their names mean, their names meant the destroyer and the devourer. All right. And basically the devourer had to turn around and say, look, God bless them. And I can't destroy them no matter how much you want them to, Amen. want me to. And if we could get a revelation of that, every time that the devourer wants to devour us, yes. he has to turn around and say, I can't. Yes. God's blessed him. God bless I couldn't devour him if I wanted to. Hallelujah. Couldn't curse him if I wanted to. Hallelujah. I remember one time, um, I, I, I was running hard from God. And Mom, just close your ears. So we had snuck off somewhere. That we weren't supposed to be. <laughs> but around a bunch of people we weren't supposed to be. And uh, they, they were all, they caught, they, they were all, you know, into magic and all this crazy stuff. And so they were talking about how they were going to uh, curse someone or do something of that nature. And as hard as I was running from God, I had been raised here. Seeing the power of God all over the place. And so it, it just rose up in me. Right. And I just said, look, y'all say all you want. Uh -huh. But y'all couldn't curse my papa if y'all wanted to. Right. You can curse him. Yeah. You can say every chant you wanted. Uh -huh. You can kill whatever animal you wanted. Uh -huh. You can burn dolls. You can do whatever right. you wanted. That one got the Holy Ghost. You can't curse him. It right. wouldn't have one effect on him. That's right. Why? Because I was so sure of the power of God that yes, operated in right. Well, we need to get that sure of the power of God that Amen. operates in Amen. us. Amen. Because he is not a respecter of persons. Amen. The same power that operated in the man of God 40 years ago is still in this oh, earth operating. It's the same Holy Ghost. Yeah. Paul said it's the same Holy Ghost that raised Jesus from the dead. Amen. And that he will also quicken whose mortal bodies? Not your heavenly bodies. Your heavenly bodies don't need quickening. Amen. 
We want to get healed when we go to heaven. You don't need to be healed in heaven. You are healed there. He's quickening our mortal bodies. The ones that need renewing. The ones that need it, that have been living down here being told every day how cursed they are and need a revelation of how blessed they are, that's the ones that he's going to renew. Then in verse 9 it says, But ye are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit. If so be that the Spirit of God dwell in you. That's why I said that there, there's a lot of flesh that's about to get silent. Yeah. Yeah. And I prayed over myself. It's not just for people out there running wild. Right. I'm sure there's all places in my life where I want my flesh to be silent. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. That no matter what pops up, my flesh gets silent. Yeah. Yeah. And I let the Holy Ghost that arise in my habitation yeah. and let Him speak. Because Jesus said, I only speak what I hear my Father Amen. speak. Yes. And that's why every word he spoke had power. Because he wouldn't just speak an idle word. That's right. We are very guilty of speaking idle words. Uh, all of us. And we have to watch our words. And sometimes it's just better not to say anything. If you don't know what to say in that moment, just keep quiet. Sure. Because it's better than saying an idle word. Yes, that you don't even want to begin with. And then it says, Now if any man have not the Spirit of Christ, he is none of his. So, you know, well you say, well, so and so, they got sick with that cancer and they died. Well, was so and so a part of his group? And if they were, did they know that they were already healed? I mean, don't let the world determine. Don't listen to Babylon and let them tell you who you are. Because they're not of him. They don't understand the things. They're going to think that you're crazy. That, that, I mean, that's just, they don't know any better. You can't expect someone that doesn't know any better to act better. You can't expect them to understand. But what you can do is go ahead and be who you are anyways. Doctors may not understand why you say, no, i got to pray about that before I do it. All right. They may not understand why you say, no, I've got to pray about that before I give you an answer. Yeah. Um, I heard one minister talk about how he had moved back here because the Lord had told him to come back and start a church. So he moved back to the state of Florida, and he was looking for a house to live in with his family. And he went, and they saw this house, and they loved it. And the realtor wanted them to put an offer in right then, because... They said, yeah, we love it. We think this is probably the one. But the realtor really didn't understand when he turned around and said, no, I'm not putting an offer in. i got to go home and pray about this. i got to go home and make sure it's the one. i got to see what price i got to pay. Because I'm not just going to pay it because that's what they ask. I'm going to ask the Lord. What well, am I supposed to pay for this? And, and so they went home and he said, and he, the next day, and the realtor didn't understand it. The realtor was like, if you don't put, a, if you don't put something in, you know, that's what they'll tell you. If you don't get this right now, somebody else might come and get this house. If you don't put in for this right now, if you don't buy this car today, it won't be on the slot when you come back tomorrow. Well, that's not true. If it's yours, it'll be there. If it's not yours, you don't want it. So they went and they said, no, we're not putting in anything today. No offers until we go. And what they do, they didn't even go home and do what we would call the sensible thing and start getting their, their money ready. They went and took their kids to SeaWorld. Because they had never been to SeaWorld. And had a good family day. And got in peace. And got in joy. And got in rest. So they could hear from the Holy Ghost. And not be in a state of do I do I, what do I do, what do I do, what do I do, what do I do. And then when he relaxed and got in the Holy Ghost. He asked the Lord, is this for me? Yes. The Lord told him to go back. Put in his offer. He put in his offer. He got the house. Nobody else took it from him. But there, if you allow, Matt talked about this a little bit on Wednesday. There is a spirit of fear in the world that wants to pressure you to make decisions immediately. And wants to say, you got to do this right now. And Michelle Donald talked about that because she had a sister whose husband had a heart problem and they wanted to do stuff to him right now. And when she called Michelle, Michelle told her, said, I, I, just, I don't think you need to move so fast. All this is going too fast. You need to stop and pray. But the doctors were telling her he's going to die. you got to do it right now. you got to do it right now. Well, this was back before they checked blood for things. And 
during the course of his surgery, he had to have a blood transfusion, and he acquired AIDS right. from that blood transfusion. Blood, yeah. And by the time they found out, now the wife had AIDS oh, as well. Yeah. And all of that because they wouldn't just stop That's and right. put on the brakes and say, do we do this right now? They allowed the pressures of this world. They allowed, why? Is it personal? No. But if you get carnally minded, That's right. it leads to death. Yes, it does. If you get spiritually minded, it leads to life. life. Every right. single time. There, there's just one path. That's why the word says it's a path and it's narrow and there's few that you find on it that actually trust that the spirit of life will lead you to right. eternal life. Right. That it will actually lead you where it said it was going to go. But many are the people that are just running around on that wide path. Just running around. And that's really, it's really what it looks like when you watch their lives, especially for Christians. I love, um, I told Mom about this, and I think I might have mentioned it once here, when I was reading one time one of Watchman Nee's books. Because we have a lot of questions sometimes, you know, because we know the word works. But then we see Christians whose lives just in a mess. So why? If the word works, then why? And Watchman Nee said there are some people who got born again, but that was it. Even maybe spirit filled. Right. But they really haven't surrendered their whole life right. to Christ. Right. Right. He does not run every aspect of their life every day. And God is an all consuming fire. Yeah. He yeah. wants it all. Yeah. He wants every single thing. Because he's going to make it all good. But he wants it all. And he said, these people, they, they, they get stuck in limbo. Because sure. they're no good to God because they won't do what he says. That's right. But they're no good to the world either because they're born again. And the world don't want them either. And they're like Peter. They can't even cuss right and get out there and do it right with the world. So they just get stuck in this state of limbo where they're no good to the world, no good to the church. And I thought, my God, how many Christians have I seen live their whole life that way? That they don't succeed in the world, but they don't succeed in God either. Because they won't just submit. And we might as well go ahead and, and, and deal with it. If we've given our lives to Christ, we're no good to the world anymore, so there's no sense to try and go back to them. Because right. we'll always stick out. Yes. We'll stick out even when we don't want to stick out. Our speech will betray us. Yeah. <laughs> and we won't be able to look like we used to look anymore. And there'll always be some girl sitting around the fire to call us out and say, aren't you one of them? And, but it, we don't want to just sit here and be no good to God either. Right. We want to crucify the flesh. Yeah. And yet Paul said, Never, yet, nevertheless, you'll live. But it won't be you living anymore. It'll be Christ living in you. Well, Christ don't get sick. And Christ don't go broke. Amen. And Christ isn't in strife with anybody. Because the Hebrews said that he put it into all strife. All strife yeah. He put it into it. A lot of people might have been in strife with Christ, but he wasn't in strife with them. He knew who he was. He knew where he was going. And when they tried to kill him, the Bible said, the boys asked me recently, what does that mean? Because it would say, and he just passed through them. Well, what do you mean they were trying to kill him and he just went through them? I don't know exactly what it means, but I know that they didn't lay a hand on him. <laughs> I don't, that's what I told the boys. I said, I don't know what that means, whether he just disappeared, whether the Lord just stopped them from what they were doing. I don't know exactly how it works. I really don't care how it works. The point is that nobody can touch you if God says right. nobody can touch right. you. Yeah. That's the point. The, the, the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. And I don't have to know how it works. I don't have to figure it out Hallelujah. to believe it. I don't. Right. I drive a car here. My husband and I have this going joke because he likes cars. And so he and he can tell you a lot about him. And he talks to me sometimes, and I don't even know what he's talking about. Right. He he rattles off numbers; they mean nothing to me. And that's our joke, because I'll just look at him and say, "That's nice, honey." Because I don't know what it means; it doesn't mean anything to me. But I drive a car every time I want to come to church, and I don't have to know how it works, and I don't have to know any of those things, but I can still participate yes. in the blessing that a car is. You don't have to understand how God's about to open up the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that you cannot receive. Amen. You don't have to know the details. Yeah. All you have to do is get in agreement with it. Yeah. You don't have to know the details. How's he going to heal this that the doctor said it can't heal? 
How's he going to heal something that's plagued me for 20 years? How's he going to make my knees not hurt when they've been hurting for the past 20 years? I don't know and I don't care. Right. He can put in new ones. He can renew the old ones. He can do whatever he wants to do. I'm just trusting him to do it. I'm not going to stand in the way and try to outline it all and put him in my box. Get God out of your box. He don't live in a box. He's the God of this whole universe. He don't even have to just stick to just this little planet we're on. He's the God of the whole universe. And if he can do all that, then our little things, they truly are, Paul said, they're light afflictions. That are but for a moment. You've got to get convinced. You know, Pastor Matt sang that song, This Too Shall Pass. If you think of your problems as passing, instead of staying, they wouldn't trouble you so much. Kenneth Copeland said, you know, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. You're supposed to keep walking, not stand there and build a house in your shadow of death. Just constantly, constantly, constantly. You're supposed to just keep going through it because you know that there's another side to that. And I just want to encourage you this morning. Get in the spirit and you won't fulfill the lust of the flesh and you won't experience death. And you'll start living under that. The spirit of the law of Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. God bless you this morning.